It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show, a weekly podcast about comics, the comic book industry, and other geek pop culture. Music courtesy of Manny the Martyr. And now, on with the show! Hey there, everybody. It's the Fellowship of the Geeks podcast. My name is Thomas Chick, and joining me for this episode is Mike Marlow. Hey, gang. Les Webster. Hello, all. And Liz Newman. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Better, uh, right? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> The show where we promise not to sue each other and do restraining orders. Wait, I never <sighs> promised that. Right. <laughs> Those are some weirdos. <laughs> Is that in my contract? Yeah, it's contract. right. It's yeah, right. Contract. It's, it's right below the green M M&M and M clause. Uh, oh. Y'all read about that, right? About Daryl Hall. Suing John Oates and then oh. putting a restraining order on, on uh, him. Uh huh. Would be interesting to know what the hell that was all about, but the article you posted didn't say much. Well, I mean, I've, I've learned a little bit since then, just with the, just prior to recording. Um, allegedly, John Oates was trying to sell his part of whole Oates uh, entertainment to a third party, which apparently is a violation of whatever agreement they had. So Daryl's trying to stop that. Uh, that's okay. So the restraining order is to stop the sale. Stop the sale. Okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it sounded weird when that first came out because they, they kept, they, they kept everything quiet, which led to some very interesting jokes. Right, and a whole hell of a lot of weird speculation, I'm sure. Mm hmm. Some of the jokes include Daryl said he can't go for that, no can do. Mm. John O's out of touch and Daryl's out of time. <laughs> Daryl say it isn't so. <laughs> and on and on and on and on. I'm like, you know what? Those. There's been worse jokes aimed at them, so that, you know those, those right. are kind of key. Those are those are nice. What would be fun would be to come up with one for every single, for every every title of every hit they had. But yeah, we're probably not doing that tonight. No, we're not doing uh-huh. that tonight. Well, you can do that if you want to, Les. But okay, let's start right now. Let me think here. Anyway, oh, uh, here she comes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <sighs> what? Ow. Hmm. Okay. So, what's been going on in your corner of the galaxy? Um... Tell us a story, Liz. <laughs> Y'all don't want to hear my stories this week. <laughs> oh man, I've I've had a time with tech. I tell you what, <laughs> about to hand my nerd no. card back in and be like, "This is why people pay like weeks ago or whatever it's called." You know? <laughs> my geek is broke. <laughs> Well, we got a title this week. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I haven't really done a lot other than a whole lot of unnecessary rearranging. Mm. Um, <laughs> no argument here. <laughs> <laughs> I did finish watching um, the first half of, that sounds weird, half of Invincible, the second season. I don't know. I'm 
have you ever watched a show and you want to like it so bad? You know, you, you liked where it was going, and then all of a sudden it's like, this is a different show than what I was watching the first season. I, I, I feel like that's where we've gotten into. Um, the, the first villain that they introduced to us, the, the Brainiac dude, I, I forget his name because that's how often they talk about him. Um, we only saw him in clips at the ending of these shows. And, um, you know, they they haven't, the last, uh, we've only seen him twice, because the last two episodes, they don't really even mention him. But he's supposed to be the big bad of this season. Instead, we're back with his dad, um, who, of course, was the villain of the first season. And, you know, at the beginning of the season, we kind of see them repairing, well, not repairing, but it was kind of the aftermath of the fallout of the fight that they had and um spoiler alert but they've brought him back and now it, it's kind of i don't know it there there's another villain is what there is they <laughs> and and it it sucks because it's the original well it's not the original villain it's the voltamites or however you pronounce his race of people it's them, but it shouldn't have been. So my whole thing is, okay, now we're we're going to center on this Voltamite storyline. What happened to the brain melted dude guy? You know, that was that was interesting. Where was that going? You know, and I don't know. I didn't see it. Um, I. I, ha I have not read all of Invincible. I've read parts and pieces of it here and there. Um, I, I kind of know where they're going with this storyline. I don't remember some of this happening, which I'm sure is, has been changed up for TV. But, um, like, they, they've captured his dad. And I know there's more to his story than they're going to go kill him, you know. But um, I don't know. It, it's kind of like he's taken... <laughs> He's kind of making this TV show the way that I've read the series in parts and pieces. He's not giving us a full co cohesive story. And it, it's like, man, after everything I've seen him do and work on, I feel like he's kind of made this his afterthought project. He kind of did this while he was bored with his other stuff that he's got going on. Because, of course, you know, Walking Dead's got what? 20 spinoffs now, you know, I, I, I understand he's busy. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as many as Supernatural, but anyway. <laughs> well, Supernatural never had a, a successful spinoff. So, you know, Walking Dead, it seems like everything he throws out of it, you know, it, it gathers the audience pretty quickly. And I don't know. I, 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 I kind of feel like this with the way I do with the Mandalorian. Pick a project, dude. You know, you, you've got us jerking all around and everything else. Just pick a project and finish it. If you've got more stories in your head, great. You have something to do once you're done with something you've made a commitment to. But, you know, I, I've seen this Daryl Dixon spinoff that's from The Walking Dead. Now, he's blaming COVID for a lot of the, the, the production delay and everything else. It didn't delay Daryl's show. He's not splitting Daryl's show in half, you know, so it's kind of a really, you know, why don't you just say you've bit off more than you can chew and this is no longer your baby, you know? So I don't know. <laughs> because I'm, Amazon has given him too much money for him to be able to do that. I think that's what it is. I think had he not have been obligated to make this, probably a contract or something, then I don't think this would have been done. Because I, I really, I, I think with the spinoffs that he did from The Walking Dead, now, now this is totally assumption, my opinion here, because I have not watched any of them. I kind of read the chatter here and there. But, you know, I, I quit watching The Walking Dead, um, I guess, two seasons from the end, whatever that was. And I, I think he spun a bunch of it off, and he was going to see what worked. Which one are they going to go for? Are they going to go for Maggie and Negan over here? 
Are they going to go with Daryl and Carol over here? You know, where where's my next where's my next paycheck coming from? So I don't think he planned on the success from what he's having. And now he's got too many pokers in the fire and they're all they're all hot, you know. But I think this one got pushed to the side because it got cold. <laughs> So, so I don't know. So we're I, just straight up calling Robert Kirkman out on this. I, I am. All right. Robert, feel free to come on the show and defend your position. Yes. And I know he has <laughs> writers and producers on this show and everything else. Yeah, but... We'll talk to any of them, too. <laughs> yeah. But this is this is his work, you know, and it, it's different from when people were taking like Spider-Man and making their own movie from it because he was involved in this. So it's not like someone's using his work, you know, to do this. He was involved in this. So, yeah, I'm calling Kirkman. (laughs) (laughs) You're breaking my heart. (laughs) (laughs) But we'll see. I mean, maybe the second season will come in and it'll just shoot right off. I don't know how because. Maybe he brings it all together somehow. Yeah. Well, he's got so much story going on right now, but you've only got four episodes, dude. You know. And how long are these episodes? They are 45 minutes. Okay. So he, you know, he needs to get with it. And speaking of 45 minutes, these shows are 45 minutes long. On the third episode, I believe it was, one of the cutscenes was 23 minutes long. I mean, at that point, isn't that just another freaking episode? You know, I I don't know if he just didn't have enough for two separate episodes. So he's like, oh, we'll just make it a bonus for this episode and everybody will be happy except Liz. Except. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Cut seems supposed to be at the end. You know, I, I thought. (laughs) <laughs> I hate to even mention his name because he's like Voldemort. So we won't go there. But with Justice League, with the cutscene that he did there, which was like five minutes long or something, even that, I was thinking, really, dude? You know, that's... Come on. You know, that's a lot of information to pack into a cutscene. Your cutscene is not supposed to tell your story. It's supposed to be a, a little Easter egg, a little something, something to keep you going till the next one comes out. Not a whole freaking storyline, you know. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought even that was kind of, what are you doing? But I, I think I think because a lot of this is, is he's just got parts and pieces that they've done that's completed. And he's just kind of patching it together to make it work, you know. And, honey, you made me wait two years for this. I gladly would have waited a little longer for you to finish this. Because as it stands, I'm not liking it. It it even, it feels rushed, you know. It feels that he's got so many stories going on in his head and he wants to tell them all. And he's only got a certain amount of time. Slow your roll. Get more seasons, you know. Your show is successful. You will have more seasons. Tell those stories then. Stick a story. Get a season out. And then we'll worry about the rest of the story. You know? But now we've got people who we don't know if they're dead. You know, did they kill them? What's going on there? Well, we won't tell you. Now you're going to have to wait probably another year for the next four episodes to come out for me to finish telling you this. I just, I don't think this was thought out very, very well at all. And like I said, I, I hate to even say that because I really liked the first season. It was good. It hit hard. It, the story kept its pace. You knew what was going on. There was one big bad and, you know, this one's not that. <laughs> Maybe he'll pull it together. Like I said, he's got a few months to polish a turd, I guess. I don't know, because this one just ain't happening. It ain't working, you know. That happens sometimes. Uh, Well, and he's kind of leading people to believe, and I I know why he did it before the break. He's kind of leading people to believe that um, 
spoiler alert, that Omni Man's going to die. You know, that this is the end of his story. Um, his son didn't make it to him in time, you know, to learn, blah, 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 blah. But it's not. You know, his son does wind up learning from him. Um, his dad does eventually die, but not at this point in the story. So it's kind of like, well, you went with the cheesy main character death, you know. Which, like Glenn, we will bring him back in the next episode, you know, to have a um, Alan the alien. They kind of tease that he died, too. And I have a feeling we him again, too. I don't think he's dead. And I just, I, I don't know. To me, that's kind of, I hate to say it, but it's lazy writing, you know. Give him a shot and get a thrill, but it's not going to have anything to do with the damn story, you know. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it gets pulled together. Cause, and it's funny I said Glenn because Glenn, or I forget his real name, but Glenn from The Walking Dead, even young, he is the, the lead voice in this cartoon. So it's kind of like, man, you did him dirty again. Right. If I was him, I'd be like, Kirkman, I ain't working with you no more. <laughs> right. Twice is enough yeah don't, don't take the job the third time dude yeah you know and i don't know i mean if i was some of the actors working on this i would be kind of upset you know they're they're not getting they're not getting the material they deserve you know is kirkman writing the scripts he is not writing he's not what do they call that? The showrunner, but he is helping with the writing on the shows. But he's not the main writer on the show. But my understanding, the way that Amazon has done their behind the scenes and everything else, once these people are done with the animation and everything else, it all runs through him. So he's like the main. So he gets like a creative veto. Yeah. But I, he does write some of it. Well, and he wrote the source material. Yeah, and he did write the source material. Years ago. And and I, I understand the, the complications that come along with taking um, one medium and transferring it over to another. You, you get a little bit more leeway in a comic book because not – Everything has to be spelled out for the reader. See, so you, you know, you kind of, you can kind of fudge the details a little bit. Just the dialogue. Yeah, but you know, even that, you can skip a scene. You don't have to show everything. No. Now, you know, with TV and animation, you do. You you can't skip that scene. You know, you can't. It you know, it, it's got to be there. Plus, you can do more drawing wise than you can life wise. Which shouldn't matter on an animation of this sort. I, I think when you make an animated from, a, you know, especially from a comic book, you still have a little bit of that leeway. But it's a little bit, it, it, well, I hate to say this, but it's a whole lot easier than turning it into a live action. You know, when, once you involve people and real, you know, movement and stuff, you're going to run into some problems. Or not problems, but different. Limitations. Yeah, problems. Yeah. So whereas with animation, you know, you can still drop the anvil on the head and, you know. <laughs> right. You can't beat your villain to a bloody pulp in real life. Right. You have to include some special effects somehow, and it makes it complicated. It does. And you have to worry about making that believable. In yeah. a comic book, we're not really dissecting it that much. <laughs> Speak for well, yourself. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. You know, you see the you see the drawing and you know what happened. You know, you didn't well, have to see every hit land to know that really happened. You know, right. And and something else you may you uh, might want to keep in mind. He's probably doing the same thing that he did with Walking Dead. Where he didn't want to follow the book, the source material closely, that way that the readers had an advantage on people who were only watching the show. He may, he may be, he may be doing the same thing here. 
Yeah. And that, and that, and that, and that may be why things are so disjointed it's as as screen as... like maybe. Just a thought. He well, could be I mean... he could be intentionally making things a little harder to understand because he doesn't want the seasoned reader of the comics to mm-hmm. pick it all up immediately. Yeah. 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 So, I, I, so he's baiting you, Liz. That's what he's doing. I, I understand that part of it. I really do. And and in some instances, I can even appreciate that. Like Sandman. Sandman didn't follow the comic book, you know, word for word or pain for pain either. But it was adapted so beautifully that it told the story even with the changes that were made. I, I feel like with this and with The Walking Dead, the changes that were made, you're changing the story at that point, which isn't what people were, you know, it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to do it without saying examples like like with The Walking Dead. When when you took when you took Coral, <laughs> when you took Carl out of the equation, you took your moral compass away from your main character, which was pretty much what the whole Walking Dead was built around. He was trying to make a world that his son could live in, you know, in the aftermath of a zombie apocalypse. That was the story. That was the whole series of The Walking Dead. Well, in, in you know, he followed that all up until season seven when he finally killed Carl off. And it was kind of like, huh, OK, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'll watch it a little bit more. And then he had Rick leave. Well, what the hell is the point of the story anymore then? This was Rick's story about his son. Well, not about his son, but it did involve his son. The whole purpose of the show or, you know, the story was about the son. And now you've taken both these characters out. It's crap. It's no longer The Walking Dead. Not the story that you gave to me and said you were going to put on TV. You know, it's. You went from <laughs> The Walking Dead to Dawn of the Dead. You see what I'm mean? It's two different stories. They're both zombie stories. They're both good stories, but it's not the original story. It's not the 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 basis or the the basis of the story, which was you know he was trying to create a world that his son could could live in. Yeah, I have it too damn close. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's fine. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there, there's a few things, you know, a few stories that have done that. It's you, you can get away with changing a lot, but once you change your main goalpost in your story, it's no longer that story anymore. It's something different, you know. So I'm hoping he doesn't do that with him. Uh, uh, and I'm, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah, so it becomes a different story, which is what he said it was going to be. No, with The Walking that, Dead, that's not what he literally said. Literally what Tom said less than five minutes ago. Well, was that with Kirkman walk- said it was not, he was going to change it up so mm-hmm. that the He did say readers, that. Mm-hmm. He did say that, Kirkman but not before that. he made the show. So he was already five, six seasons in, the, and then he said, "Now I'm going to change it up." The other point is, who owns the trademark on The Walking Dead? Who owns the copyright? Uh, it, it Robert is, Kirkman. That's what I say. Kirkman would, yeah. Right. It's his to do with as he pleases. Just because you, you not liking it is fine. Cool. Yeah. You don't have to watch it, but that doesn't negate his right to make it. No, but at the same point, it, no, 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 no. (laughs) You can't tell me you're going to have a Superman movie, okay? And we see Superman for five seasons. We see him going. We see him doing his Superman thing. We see him jumping them buildings. And then the sixth season, you decide, you know what? I don't think I'm going to do this anymore. I'm going to change this story and I'm going to take Superman out. And now it's Batman. But no, this is a Superman story. Don't get me wrong. This is a Superman story. But instead of, you know, Superman 
you know, stopping that train. It's going to be Batman now. Well, are you still giving me a Superman story? No, you're pissing on my head and tell me it's raining. You know, it's it's not the it's not the same thing. It's <laughs> you can't change halfway through and be like, oh, but this is what I planned on doing. And actually, I think what he said was he was changing the story because he liked pissing us off, which kind of pissed me off. Because why would you intend? <laughs> then that's when you should have walked away. Yeah, and I did. <laughs> And, and we're still talking about it 10 years <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I was about to say, someone didn't read World Without a Superman. Because there was like a year, there was like a year where they, had, after after he died, and you had the four imposters. I think we covered that at least to some extent on the show. Well, yeah. My thought with the Superman story was, okay, we, we have a Superman story, and, and he does all this cool stuff, and he can leap tall buildings, and yada, yada, yada. And you know what? Like year six. Um, oh, fuck it. He can fly. Yeah. Which they did. Yes. That's pretty, and it, pretty much what happened. Apparently yeah. it was still yeah. a Superman story, even though he was different. And I am done making points about this now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, no, but, but see, you weren't, you weren't changing him completely. You were adding a skill. He was still doing the Superman thing. He was still with, you know, Lois Lane. He still had Jimmy Olsen by his side. He was still, you know, wearing the underwear outside. I mean, he was still Superman. So it wasn't like, okay, now instead of Superman, you know, it. they didn't change him. They just added to him. With The Walking Dead, they didn't just add to it. They took away from it. You took two main characters out that pretty much was at the end to The Walking Dead. You know, that's <laughs> that. what it was about, you know. So how is it Rick's story if Rick's no longer there? It's not. How does he even know what the hell's going on there? Because he's not there. So it's not his story, which is what The Walking Dead was. So that that's the, the only thing I have. I don't mind them adding things. I don't. Because like you said, it... It would be kind of boring to know exactly word for word and scene for scene what was going to happen, you know. Um, when people lost their shit over Glenn, I didn't. I had read the story. You know, yeah, it was still shocking to see it, you know, play out. But, sure. it, that, you know. That's the idea. That's the point. Yeah. I want it to be shocking. And I'm just, I'm just screwing with you, Liz. You are, yeah. your, your opinions are entirely valid. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Poking the bear, as it were. Yeah. I I just think with Invincible, he's taking the ending of the story and cramming it in the beginning. Maybe the whole, maybe, maybe he's going to do eight seasons worth of flashbacks after this. <laughs> Bite your tongue, man. Or just, yeah, just, the whole do show. Do not put that out in the, the, <laughs> the whole show just becomes a prequel to this season. Oh, man. Now, how did we get to this the Arrow point? all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Weirder shit has happened. That that would be the the final push me over the edge. <laughs> now are we talking the watching the show edge, or are we talking the on the rooftop with a power powered rifle edge? Because we Let's need get to back to you on that one. Because <laughs> we, we need to know what the scale is here. Because we need to figure out bail money. You know. Right. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, like I said, I, I still enjoy watching it because I, I do have a friend who, you know, <laughs> who gets together and watch it. So I do enjoy watching it, but... I'm totally convinced. How about you, Mike? Oh, yeah, because she's, big, she's the biggest fan right here. Mm. I was about to say, but at this point, I feel like I'm hate-watching, you know? Um, you are. It really sounds like you are. And, yeah. I mean, to an extent, that's fine. As long as you're but enjoying I... hate-watching it, it's cool. Yeah. I, I want to. I want to enjoy it though. I, I want what he laid out in the first season for. That was that was good. That was one complete cohesive story. You know, it wasn't jumbled and disjointed and all over the place and bad guys running all over. You know, which hey, it's a superhero show. There are supposed to be bad guys running all over. Mm-hmm. You know? But you know how it is when they introduce the big bad. This is the guy you're going to look out for all season long. 
and then you you built them up, and now it's like. Remember in those cartoons when Elmer Fudd was fighting the ants with firecrackers? And they gave him that really big firecracker, and he was like, oh, no, he was bracing for it. He just knew this thing was going to blow his head off. And as soon as it exploded, it was like this little beady-ass little firecracker, and he was like, oh, <laughs> that's what I feel like this show is doing. <laughs> I, I wanted that big firecracker, and now that it's popped, it's this little bitty thing, you know. All right, we got our first Elmer Fudd metaphor in a while here. <laughs> All right, we heard it from Liz first. Robert Kirkman is Elmer Fudd. Fudd, the Fudd is back. <laughs> <laughs> but if we could just get Mister Movie to announce that, we'd be great. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. If he wants to come on the show and do that, that'd be great, too. By far. Open mic. Mm -hmm. Speaking of mic. (laughs) That's called a segue, folks. That's called a segue born of desperation. But anyway. It's my turn, huh? Um, okay, well, mine is a slightly less, well, okay, I, I, that's, that wasn't a happy note. I can't go, there. I can't say that. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the tables a bit, though, because I'm going to praise something. Um, unlike whatever that was Liz just did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that was either. Like, like we said, as long as you're having fun with it, it's cool. Yeah. Um, and as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, except for Robert Kirkman's feelings. But anyway. Uh, he's got enough of my money. I'm sure he's okay. He's fine, yeah. <laughs> he's good. He's got enough of a lot of people's money. But anyway. Yeah. Um, I got... Um, this actually was about a month ago. I got a uh, graphic novel that, that I picked up um, that, that I re- read just the other day. And I think that a lot of other people should read it. Um, it is called Sleeping While Standing, and it is written and drawn by Taki Soma. Um, what this book is, it's a little, it's not exactly what you're used to. Um, this book is a series of really short, it's, it, like I said, it's a graphic novel. It's really short little autobiographical stories. Um, and like I said, I think a lot of people should read this book if they haven't already, um, because it is really good. It is really amazing. If you've never thought that what is, I mean, what could be described as a comic strip could give you the feels, this book will prove you wrong. Um, this lady has been through a lot of shit and there's a good bit of it in this book. And it is the kind of thing that it's different enough from what most comics readers are used to that they need to experience it. I'm not going to spoil anything out of this because that would be too easy and it would take a lot away from the book itself. Um, But it is a book that, you should get and read. It's that fucking good. Where is this available? Uh, pretty, you'd probably order it from any comic shop that you frequent. Um, in a pinch, I'm sure you can get it through Amazon. I believe that's how I got it. Okay. Sleeping while standing. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Alrighty, Les. Uh, let's see. Got through the holiday. Thank yeah. God. Yay. Um, 
I got a book the other day by Joe R. Lansdale. And please forgive me, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's um, about, it's a collection of his short stories, his crime short stories. Uh-huh. And it's it's a fun read. If you've read some of Lansdale's stuff, uh, the, the guy just has a grasp on everything he writes. And this includes some of his uh, more famous work, like uh, Bubba Hotep or The Drive-In. It, it, this is good, thought-provoking fun. This will make you think. This will make you try to figure out the whodunit portion of the story. So, if you get the chance, and I'm, like I said, I'm so sorry I cannot remember the name of it, which is a big selling point. It certainly helps people track it down. Sure. I don't want anybody to read this because I want it, all the copies myself. Now uh, that I can believe. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Be nice. So, go looking for Lansdale's latest book. It's it's what I've gotten into is pretty phenomenal. And this is a writer I would follow for a long time. He's just that interesting. But that's about it for me. Neat. Yeah, Lansdale. He's the kind of guy that does a lot of different stuff. And he does it surprisingly well. A lot of different genres, yes. Things get ugly? That's it, thank you. Things get ugly, the best crime stories of Joe R. Lansdale. Yeah, I was trying to look for it too. (laughs) Thank you, Mikey. Mm. Uh, Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Google. Thank your dad, kids. Thanks, Thanks dad. dad. For me, not not a whole heck of a lot. Yeah, the holiday has come and gone and all that. I've actually started kind of binge-watching Gunsmoke again. Uh, I kind of got away from that from, for a while. and um, But uh, kind of got back into that, and I joined... Because I'm I'm watching them on uh, Pluto TV, and I joined right around I don't know it's about season seven or eight. It was right around the time that where Dennis Weaver left, and and we had uh, um, I can't remember his name right now. Plays uh, um, Festus. Uh, anyway, and that renewed my hatred of that character. <laughs> I, it just, he gets on my nerves so damn quick. And it was, it was, it's something funny I've noticed this round of watching. He, um, it sounds, every time he mentions Dylan's name, it's almost like he's sneezing. Matthew! Gazunite. Matthew! <laughs> Ken Curtis. Ken Curtis. Ken Curtis, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, 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 and bless him. I mean, I've seen him in other stuff. So. Bless him. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's a good actor. He was a good actor. 
because if you've seen him in other, ro- other roles, you go, okay, this this is not the same guy. So, I, I mean, but it's just, he gets so annoying. <laughs> now, I do I do love the arguments between him and, 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 the, and the doc. It kind of reminds me of, um, in a way, the 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 chemistry between McCoy and Spock on Star Trek, except for you know you got you got you got a country doctor with an attitude, and instead of instead of having a emotionalist, highly intelligent being, you've got a bumbling idiot. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, but it's been fun kind of watching them again, and, and I do recommend watching them. I know, I know, it's you know, yeah, it's a western, but a lot of a lot of the stories. It, it, I mean, it, it's it's not a stereotypical western. Some of these are really, really well done stories that are. Uh, you know, they could you could take it and put it in some another environment and the story would still work for the most part so they're not they ne- they never really truly relied but for the most part try, right, relied on okay there's there's gonna be a gunfight uh there's gonna be a horse chase you know that kind of stuff the, the stuff that you automatically think of when you think of westerns um just really really good stories so You'd think so. It lasted twenty flipping years on TV. Well, yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I, so you would, you'd, you'd kind of expect at least somewhere along the line they did some good stuff. Yeah, but I mean, some people, if you mentioned that it's a western, they probably, you know, they conjure up the stereotypical, you know, thing and. Yeah, but you know, it's it's a little bit more deep than that, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's that's what that's what made it last so long. Right. So. Yep. All right. Um, let's go ahead and get into this week's discussion. Um, if you if you hadn't already noticed, it is Christmas time, and some some. Some aspects, Christmas has been around since July. <sighs> but um, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to kind of just uh, pick on some areas for a discussion. And this week, I just thought it would be interesting to kind of discuss how one gets into the spirit of the season. Uh, it may be a little tough sometimes, uh, but uh, – it just I thought it would be interesting to kind of go over that a little bit. So let's 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 get into it. What gets you into the spirit if you, or if you do get into the spirit? I mean, is it is, is it a movie? Is it is it the decorations? Is it the lights? Is it, is it the music? What? A combination of things? The cooler temperatures? What? I think for me, I've got two answers. Mm. Because things, things were definitely different when the kids were little. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as getting into the Christmas spirit and getting them into the Christmas spirit and stuff. Um, you know, of course, for us, it always kicked off on Thanksgiving. Um, we didn't do a lot for Thanksgiving when... Um, when I was younger, dad would always go skiing on Thanksgiving. It's the only time he could get a lot of time off from work and actually be able to go. So we were kind of left there with mom and, you know, not a lot to do. So we, we just never really celebrated that. And then as I got older and I got married, he started taking all the guys skiing. So me and my sister, we'd, you know, get together and do that. But while me and her were together, um, we could do the Black Friday shopping. For me, that that really kicks off the Christmas season is Black Friday shopping. Um, 
would stay up all night and wrap everything so the kids wouldn't. Because, of course, mom's at home alone, so kids all stayed with granny. (laughs) But we would stay up all night and wrap Christmas gifts while the guys were gone and, you know, put Christmas music on and that kind of stuff. So I guess she kind of kicked my Christmas off for me. Um, Now that the kids are older, um, still... Black Friday kicks off the Christmas season for me. I, I get probably 80% of my shopping done there. But for me, it's the, the TV shows. TV seems to change around that time. And it's like even normal shows kind of kick into their winter episodes and that kind of thing. And I'm like total... <laughs> I... I I love like the corny Christmas crap, and that's what it is. It's crap. It's they're not very good movies or anything, but I'll still sit there and watch watch them. You know, because they're Christmas. I've watched too many already. (laughs) Right, you were talking about it before Halloween, even so, or during October. Yeah. So somebody started early. Mm. Well, they started playing Elf. That's my favorite. Show is Elf, and it's like as soon as you see Elf on TV, you know Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> and this year's a little bit different, you know. I honestly thinking about strapping antlers to the dog, dyed myself green, and going and stealing. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure Taco's little head can hold up antlers. I don't, I don't know. Oh, it'd be funny to see. <laughs> he loved twigs. And he would love it, I'm sure. Oh, well, I'm sure. He would love being able to go into everybody's house and peeing on their Christmas tree. He is my spirit. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> Christmas just hits a little differently this year. <laughs> yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think for me, movies play a big part into, you know, you, you see all these little happy love stories or, you know, Christmas miracles and that kind of thing. And it. <laughs> yeah. It does, you know. Sometimes it is nice, you know. I've always liked emotion porn, so that's all that is. <laughs> okay. Who would like to go next? You know what? I'll go next because that way somebody else can bring it back up. Mm, okay. <laughs> Um, let's, let's talk about her chihuahua being her spirit animal, which, boy, there's a therapy session or two in that one. Um, my, my Christmas time spirit animal is the turtle. Um, turtle, it, turtle. Because my goal for the Christmas season is to just tuck my head back in my shell and ride the storm out. Um, I don't get into the season at all, really. Um, I tolerate the season because I have to. Because, yay me, I have a family that gets a big kick out of the season. Um, So I, I do my part by I get the boxes of Christmas crap out of the attic every year i did it this past weekend um and i set them down in the in the spare room and i walk away and as long as they don't try to put that crap up in the house too early i don't complain because that doesn't do any good anyway (laughs) so i just don't do it well thank you for taking them down after thanksgiving appreciate that Uh uh-huh Bring, bring, bring. Thanksgiving and they're just going to put them up a week later. So 
Well, no, I'm talking about bring them down from the, a- from the attic. Bring them out from the attic. Yeah, if I if I brought them down earlier, they'd put them up earlier. That would be dumb. The deal we have is not before Thanksgiving. Um, they usually aim for somewhere around the first of December, um, and it all generally gets packed up again, so I can put it back in the attic around the first of January. It's sometimes a little after, and I don't get too uptight about it. I usually um, usually by then they're kind of done too. And so it's not a big deal, but sometimes it waits till the weekend cause it takes a couple of hours to put it all away. Um, and the other side of it is all of our stuff is inside the house. I mean, there's a wreath that goes on the outside of the front door, but that's literally it. Nothing else goes out. They actually, I say that for the last couple of years, they've strung some lights in the bushes out front, but that's as far as it goes. Um, and I just stay out of it and let them do what they want to do. Let them be happy about it. Um, the Christmas season has just not always been the happiest time of, of the year for me. So yeah. it doesn't mean as much. <laughs> and it's, um, I, my kid is old enough now that it's not as big a deal as it was. It was fun there for a few years when he was little and it was, and he was excited. Um, He's my kid, so he doesn't get super excited about a lot of things. <laughs> so, I mean, I could take her. Color leader. me shocked. I know, right? I don't know where he learned that from. <laughs> we don't. We don't do outside decorations. We tried one year. <laughs> we just. We don't have the house for it. <laughs> I mean, it's good to know that too, because. <laughs> I mean, some houses you just can't go running around on the roof hanging stuff up. Yeah, we kind of live at, at a turn on our street, so my house is kind of at an angle. So the one year Phil tried, bless his heart, he gets up there and he puts a star on the roof, and it wound up looking like a pentagram. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah, let's not do lights. Not enough points, dude, not enough points. Especially when you were turning onto the street, you could see this big star that was upside down the star. (laughs) (laughs) Is that a signal that he's in trouble? Damn. (laughs) No, he just knows his target audience. (laughs) Mm. He he knew Liz would want a pentagram more than a star. We keep all the family away this year. Mm. Mikey gets in the spirit by not getting into the spirit. <laughs> right. I get in the spirit by not getting angry. And that's mostly the best that I can manage. So. But do you get into the spirits? I, <laughs> not really a drinker. So, no. Not so much. Okay. Um, I, I. Yeah, I don't really drink much i mean i can't remember the last time i had a drink um i don't i don't get into eggnog um i don't particularly like you're pumpkin to get in it you're supposed to drink it maybe that was the that's what i'm doing wrong no i that just is... i'm not i don't it just tastes <laughs> like milk it tastes like sour milk to me so i mean i wouldn't drink eggnog any more than i would drink buttermilk it's just not, it just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't hit me right. So I don't do it. And... You say that and now I'm not surprised you don't like candy corn. You just don't like the holiday stuff. I, I don't like abominations. No, no, I'm not into abomination. I don't like eating abominations. So no, I, I consume neither of these things. <laughs> We had such hopes. <laughs> uh huh. That'll learn you. Uh huh. You talk. You talk about eggnog. Um. The other day, I was placing an order from my grocery store, and the first thing you do, well, the first thing you see when you go up to the website, there's a uh, Showing, hey, you know, it's the holidays. Here's all the ho- holiday stuff we have in, and that kind of thing. And like, 
I, I do like eggnog. I was like, oh, man, I haven't had that in a couple of years. So I place an order in with the rest of groceries. And then when I get a confirmation of what's, what I'm getting, it's like, well, we don't have an eggnog. I'm like, why are you fucking showing it? You got it when you don't have it. Ah! Also, it's it. it's the last, it's honest, it's after Thanksgiving. What grocery store does not have eggnog right now? Yeah, you would you would think all of them would have it. They would yeah. all have it. There's no way they don't all have it. Pack of yeah. is not to. So, uh, for me, I, I I don't I really don't get into the spirit like I used to. Last several years have been. Uh, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Um, used to decorate it outside you know when my dad was alive and we would do everything he would he would actually get up on the on the roof put up the lights and all that uh and i would work on the the bushes and all that type of stuff but the last two or three years or so i would actually put i would do if i did any decorations it would be inside um but now with a with a puppy, I'm concerned about some, him getting access to some of that stuff, and it should be just be a nightmare. So I I really don't get into the spirit. I've been I've been trying to this year. Um, I, I just actually had this conversation with my sister the other day. I was like, I had. All these intentions of what I wanted to do. I was going to put up decorations. I was going to, I was going to do Christmas cards. I still could, but you know, I, I just the way things have gone this year, I've just, I, as much, as much as I've tried, I, I just, I just can't get into it. Um, you know, well, I've talked a lot about Pluto TV. I know at the first of November they. Uh, brought back their holiday channels and one of them that I've been watching off and on a bit is there's a channel just of holiday lights so you know like for 30 minutes or an, or an hour or something like that and maybe a di- different type of themed music I mean it could be like just piano or yeah, some of you know different types of music, and then and then and kind of themes of of Christmas lights. I was talking about this last night to you guys. Um, they even have a one or two where it's just dogs. It could be just little puppies or or whatever. It's 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 like thirty minutes to an hour of just different images of. Uh, of dogs and like either out in the snow or around Christmas uh, Christmas presents or Christmas trees that kind of thing. It's it's kind of cute to watch, but um, I used like I said I used to be really big about doing decorations and doing Christmas cards, listening to the music that kind of thing. I just it just last several years it's just been really really tough and this year's been really bad okay for the year to be over yeah yeah i can understand that you have a few extra christmas angels this year though (sighs) yay yay how about you les Bring us up. I'll try. I was say, do something fun. <laughs> At Christmas, a few things get me started. One is the malls. I like to go to the shopping malls. Not to shop, just to watch. Mm-hmm. And watch all the people. Watch all the kids. See how they are different. And of course, since our COVID breakout, it's been 
pretty much tough to to enjoy that. Yeah. I enjoy the music. I know that there's a there are two or three channels on Sirius that have Christmas music, so I'll I'll flip over to that once in a while. I look for one particular song, and that is the Christmas song by the uh, Three Chipmunks. I just yeah. get so in, uh, into that, and I love hearing it. <clears throat> Christmas gives me a chance to watch movies. When my guests were here the other day, I pulled my sister aside and I said, listen to this. And I played the Christmas ad for a place in Oklahoma City called B.C. Clark's. B.C. Clark's is a, still is, is a uh, jeweler. And they had a snappy little tune so the rest of the week, my sister and I would look at one, one another and say things like, you know, most sales are after Christmas. And she would say, but Clark's is just before. And then we'd just start singing the song. <laughs> it's a very catchy tune. And if you're, if you're from that area, you know this thing by heart. It's been a uh, one thing was it was on television national television when Megan Mullally who was in Will and Grace at the time sang it on one of the talk shows and then it turned around and somebody did a news piece on a national news piece on that, on that song. So it is known. And if you go to BC Clark uh, jingle, you can hear it and see it. It's got a little video for it. This thing's been around since 1956. So if you're, you know, even 10 years old, you know this by now. Uh, movies, yeah, I, I get into the movies, not necessarily those from Hallmark. <laughs> but there are some, some good movies there. Not uh, all of us are built for Hallmark. <laughs> do I do? I said not all of us are built for Hallmark. No, no. I mean, I love watching the Santa Claus movies with Tim Allen. I think they're fun. Um, I'm not into the decorations. In fact, my wife is not either. So we have a couple plants in here that we put a string of lights on say up that's it we don't do exterior lights at my age I don't want to even try to get near the roof yeah I understand that uh, it to me it's it's a kick in it, it kicks me in to another feeling that A resurgence is coming. And because of that feeling, I thoroughly enjoy Christmas. My mother would always give me gifts at Christmas that were prone to be Christmas. Because she said she felt that I love Christmas so much it was my favorite uh, holiday and she was 
pretty much right. Not totally, but pretty much. When you've got four kids living in a house, five later, uh, you, you make do. You have your brothers and your sisters and just go at it. Like cats and dogs, yes. Mm -hmm. But then you turn around and feel like this is the season that we are accepting one another in every way, shape, and form. So just the ideas of, to me, going to the mall and seeing what's going on. And like I said, I don't have to buy anything. I don't have to be uh, in search of anything. I just want to go see what the people are doing. And hopefully it will uh, carry on into this year. And that's it for me. Not as bah humbug as the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you say taco is, is your spirit animal. Scrooge has always been mine. But anyway, <laughs> Scrooge and the Grinch. <laughs> Okay. I, still, I still get Grinch stuff from for Christmas occasionally. I I I love Christmas, but you know I I'm the kind of person though I like doing stuff for other people. I like seeing them happy. So like Christmas is right up my alley, you know. But uh -huh. it's just taking a little extra. <laughs> Yeah, uh, one of the things I I kind of enjoyed back when I was younger, I I liked the whole family getting together. Uh, not you know, and and you know having a meal and just enjoying each other's company. But you know, as you get older and all of a sudden you start losing someone here and someone there and all of a sudden we're not getting together anymore because there's really not anybody to get together with. That sucks. Yeah. I mean, my family really hadn't done much other than uh, obviously my, my mother and sister, we would do something with the three of us, but it's, it's so, so different because it, it I was thinking about this the other day. It's like this house used to be filled. There was like nine or ten people here that that had to have a meal and, and, and all that. And it just it's and now it's down to two. So you know <laughs> it kind of sucks. Yeah. Yep. And I enjoyed decorating. Uh, it, it, the, just the, all the different colors, especially, you know, this time of year. So, because it, it's, you know, with the, with the time change and all that, so we'll have more dark than than light, and that just makes the lights pop up so much more. And I, I just, I love looking at lights. There's there's. There's something about it. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure I'm sounding stupid here. Um, it's not just the colors, but you know, there's just something kind of pleasing. It's also. I mean, I think part of it maybe. <clears throat> I mean, like you said, days get shorter, nights get longer, um, and. Things that were green there for a while have gone back to brown. Yeah. And not to get all mamas and papas on it, but it uh, it does add a little bit of something to the landscape, which is, I mean, even just your front yard. Right. It, it's, yeah. It's something because different. Every, yeah, everything, everything's freaking depressing. Oh, we 
you get the the, the gloomy and the gray and the mm-hmm. you know yeah things are a lot oh, more yeah. gray and beige and all of that i mean and it's, yeah. it's winter brown not summer brown because yeah. where we live yeah. that's a thing but stuff gets brown in the in the summer just like it does in the winter because most turf grasses can't stand 110 degree temperatures but yeah. yeah, I mean, but you get longer it, days there, and so it's 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 very depressing. So mm-hmm. yeah, the, the the lights the lights are the yeah, the lights kind of help and lighten things out. up a little bit, right? Yeah, I like seeing how people their ideal of Christmas, and you can always see that through the way that they decorate the outside of their house and stuff. We used to, you know, when the kids were little, we would get them all loaded up and. Oh, back, back to Christmas spirits again. Jeez. There you go. It was different when the kids were little. It it's hard not to get into the Christmas spirit when you got a kid who's so excited and and I tell you what, as a parent, your kid will never act better from the time Halloween ends to Christmas morning. <laughs> they are on their best behavior, they're <laughs> cleaning the house. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do better in school yeah you know it's it's, it's a good time you know mm. trying to be worthy of that bb gun yeah <laughs> rain dryer <laughs> with compass in the stock yeah. mm-hmm. that's one of my other christmas stories <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> And the thing that tells time. And that movie is coming up for re-release for its 40th anniversary. Mm. Yeah. See, for me, it's weird because that one marks the end for me. I guess because, like, TBS plays it for 24 hours there on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we always turn it on and it will play all day long. But oh, yeah. that's kind of the wrap up. You, know, you did it. Yay. Makes sense, <laughs> really. Yeah. Kids are happy. And it messed me up if they played it before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, if you think about it, they usually don't. That's one that they, I don't know if TBS has the rights to it or, you know. Probably. But they usually save it till, you know, Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. Yeah, it usually starts about like 6 or 7 o'clock. Christmas Eve and goes until about 6 or 7 o'clock Christmas night. Yeah, it's literally 24 hours or or so. But it's good because it gives... It gives the staff of TNT and TBS time to kind of get away and actually be with their folks. Yeah. And it's, you just, you just set everything on automatic and leave. Mm-hmm. It builds a lot of family traditions from that movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First Christmas duck. Yeah. Uh, I... Every Christmas, I would try, you know, try to be the good wife and cook breakfast and it never failed, you know, trying to stay in between the kitchen and watching the kids open gifts and everything else. Breakfast always burned. You know, there was nothing for breakfast. I'd always wind up cutting myself. It's never officially Christmas until I'm feeding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but then um, we started going to um, Chinese food. That's the only thing open on, or before, that was the only thing open on Christmas, you know. It's smiling at me. Yeah, we have a lot of family traditions around that movie. <sighs> oh, God, Darren McGavin. <laughs> Gotta miss him. So great. I hadn't thought about music until Les mentioned it, too. I guess I do have a special Christmas playlist that I listen to also. I I found recently, um, 
I'm trying to remember his name, Robert. Is it Robert Rhymes? Something like that. It takes it takes me back to when I was a kid because the music was nothing but organ and bells. So so all the all the Christmas carols and all that was just an organ and in and, and bells. And I just I loved that. I loved the sound of that. You know, there's some there's something kind of simple and pure about it. And I I don't know if Spotify has any of that on there, but I did I did find it on YouTube. I'll, I'll have to see if I can find it again and 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 we maybe post that in the show notes to check out. But it it's. What we ought to do is post our Christmas playlist. Don't all I, agree at once. <laughs> I, well, I never. I don't. I don't really have a playlist. I mean, I would. I've been, if if I listen to something, y'all know me. I'm going to play the old Chicago stuff. But uh, other other than that, I may just like put Pandora on and whatever the hell they're playing. I'm okay with, and if I don't, then I can always skip it. So, yeah. hell yeah, I can get behind some Pantera too. Pantera? <laughs> did I say Pantera? No, you I said thought... Pandora. I'm teasing. Okay. okay. Well, with the way I am, way I am right now, I could probably say Pantera. And I would, yeah. Nothing says Christmas like Pantera. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> no, to me, when I hear Trans-Siberian Orchestra, that mm-hmm. is like Christmas. Yeah. If Christmas could make a sound, that's it. <laughs> Anything by them. Even if it's not a Christmas song by them. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see them live. I bet that's a real experience, you know. Uh, my sister is trying to get me to go see uh, Pentatonic when they come here in another couple of weeks. I'm like, yeah, we'll see. A whole concert of that? I don't know. <sighs> it's quite good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah. I I, I I don't know. I mean, there's there's kind of several reasons for me not to go, but uh, we'll see. We do in a music episode. Uh, yeah, we. I think. I think we will. Yeah. So we can get more into that next next time. Mm, next week. Okay. Song. So you guys have to tell me your playlist next week. <laughs> I win. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. We'll see. Challenge yeah. accepted. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we well, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I guess is there any final thoughts? Come share with us how you get in the Christmas spirit. Maybe it'll inspire us. Mm. <laughs> we need a little extra help this year. <laughs> if you have a playlist, enter that. Yes, and if you have a good enough one, well, we can't do that. So maybe <laughs> it. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Careful there. (laughs) Akak guns just took it out. I wonder if Jensen sings any Christmas music. Oh, boy. Oh, crap. (laughs) She's been saving that one. (laughs) We can't get through one episode. (sighs) I just do. And on that unfortunate note, we are going to take a quick break and be back with Geek News for You. And we're back, and it's time for Geek News for You. In this segment, we bring a couple of news uh, articles to the table for discussion. This week, it's Les, myself, and Les, would you go first, please? Thank you, sir. 
I am going to discuss the new release of uh, the episode of Doctor Who called The Star Beast. Star Beast is starring David Tennant as the Doctor. You have Catherine Tate as Donna Noble. Uh, you have uh, Russell T. Davies, who came out of retirement to st- uh, restart this, and hopefully it will step forward after that. It, the, we, I will have posted a an article uh, from, I want to say, the eye, and it's it's a fairly glowing response to this episode. I watched the episode today. It was a typical Doctor episode, going back to seeing David Tennant as the the protagonist. And uh, the article I'm going to post is pretty glowing. It does have a couple of things that are uh, mentioned in this, but it also has a wit to it and some, some callback to it which is fun. My understanding is they are going to do six episodes on Disney Plus that will bridge the Doctor story from uh, Jody Hauser? Jody Whitaker. Whitaker. What, thank you. Jody Whitaker to the new Doctor. At the end of Whitaker's run, if you noticed, Tennant was the one that was uh, slated for the spot. And this is just a transitional uh, series, a mini-series. So you've got like six episodes to do so. I'm also going to post a fierce uh, reaction to this episode and believe me it, this gentleman does not pull punches in this posting it's uh, neurotic and they do have a tendency to take shots at anything they review so it's not just this episode that he goes off on. He's done others for uh, everything from Blue Beetle to uh, the Marvels and and so on. But I recommend people watching this episode. Let the, take it in yourself and decide for yourself how this is handled and then read both the uh, read the article that's posted and then watch the video uh to me i'm just glad to see something coming back and if i may this is also based on a comic book an episode of or an issue of doctor who comic book so they more or less took that storyline and transferred it to the screen without much uh, difference, not much wavering. So uh, I enjoyed it, but I can also see neurotic, nerd, neurotic uh, stance on what's going on. Cool. Alrighty. Um, Interesting. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, my news article. Uh, man, a couple years back, there would have been a lot. There would have been thunderous supplies and all this, but now I think the way things are right now, and based off of the reaction I've seen, it's been a lot more muted. Um, it was announced in a Vanity Fair story that uh, Dave Filoni has now been promoted to Chief Creative Officer for Lucasfilm. Dave Filoni, who has been behind the Clone Wars animated series, Rebels animated series, Ahsoka, and, and a few other things. And He's been he's been called an apprentice to uh, of George Lucas. Um, so with this with this title, he's going to be overseeing the Star Wars movies and TV shows moving forward. Um, I'm thinking this is a good thing. He is a fan of, of the franchise, and you can definitely tell it when. An episode that he has written and directed, you, you, you could see it. I mean, it's not just the Easter eggs and, and things maybe drop, you know, mentioned here or there that, oh, I know what that's from, you know, that kind of thing. There, there, there is a love, and I think this is a good thing. I think this is a good thing that Filoni is is, is in charge of this. Like I said a couple of years ago. Most most Star Wars fans would would want wanted that to happen. They wanted Floney to be in charge of Lucasfilm and get rid of Kennedy. Um, it just seems, from what I've seen since the TV shows had started up, it's it's I, I don't know. It's gotten a lot more negative, but I, that could be more all of fandom than just Star Wars, but. I, I just think this is a this is I think this is a good thing. Um, there needs to be some kind of guidance because it seems like <sighs> projects get announced and all of a sudden before you, you know next thing you know it's not going to happen and we don't know why that and all that. It just it, it seems like there's really no direction. Um, and I think that that's that's definitely going to change with Filoni being uh, being there and and hopefully allowing creators to do stuff, uh, try to take some risks, try to do something a little bit different, uh, and but to, but to be try to be faithful to what George started. I, th- I think that will happen. Cool. Yeah. Then what will be his first choice? We don't know. I mean, everybody's everybody's assuming that there's going to be a second season of Ahsoka, which there's going to have to be. They, they, there's way too many questions left unanswered. Um, well, the biggest ones, what they're going to do with Ray Stevenson's character since he unfortunately passed before the show was aired. But uh, we we don't know. We'll, we'll just we'll just we'll just have to see because I don't know I don't know what you know what has already been thrown out there saying that these pro- projects are going to be happening. Obviously, his movie is going to still happen, uh, but. You know, there's there was the movie, the continuing Ray's story from the, from the sequel trilogy, um, the movie based on like the early days of the of the Force and the Jedi and the Sith, which is supposed to be done by um, I'm blanking on the name. He did he did Logan. He just did the Indiana Jones film. Um, Hang on, let me get real quick. I think uh, James Van Gogh. Yeah. 
I think he needs to keep these people on track. I think they've been doing too much. <laughs> As my two cents. That's I, a I running think, theme with you tonight. Well, <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've had this complaint before mm. with with the Mandalorian. I think they, they struck lightning, and then they're like, oh, but wait, we could spin this off and have Boba Fett bomb. Then, no, wait, you know, people still like this, and they're still watching it, so let's spin this off, and it bombs. And it's like, dude, stick with what people are wanting. Tell us the Mandalorian story. Don't make it a spinoff. Don't make it lead up to a freaking movie. Just give us the show. That's what we liked. But instead, it's wait two years in between each season so we can give you this bullshit that they shouldn't have done in the first place. Stay on track. Go where your audience is leading you. you well, bl- blame Favreau because he's the one that's over that. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Get these guys together. Come on. You know. Mandalorian's got, what, 20 producers? I mean, come on. Too many pokers in the fire. Rain it back. Get on track. Now, now you realize <laughs> they throw the title producer around like it it, it really means nothing. No. So the, f- the fact that, you know. It's the candy corn of the filmmaking world. Like yeah, pretty much. Boy, that was a shot. <laughs> so I, I think he just needs to rein him in. You know, you you let this this success of one thing, you know. Oh, now how can we water it down and make them hate it? You know, and that's what they keep doing. They they they're like, okay, we're listening to you. Let's we're going to give you what you want. Then they give us what we want. We make it a number one hit. We put it on T-shirts, cups, and everything else. And then it's like, wait, now I'm going to make you wait two years so you can watch Boba Fett wander the desert. I mean, come on. Just give us what we want. Give us what your audience told you. Well, surprisingly, some people wanted a Boba Fett TV show. What you wanted was T-shirts and stuffed dolls. I mean, and that's what they gave you. So there you go. And now you've got a Chia. I don't want it to yet. I want the show. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I agree. There are some people who wanted a Boba Fett thing, but numbers prove not as many that wanted the Mandalorian. You know, that's been with all of these spinoffs. I think they're capturing the audience at first from the Mandalorian crown, and then they're like, you know, And the way Mandalorian was pitched is we're going to give you a Star Wars story that's not connected to Star Wars, but in the Star Wars universe. And they have done everything they possibly can to tie it to a movie now. Why? Just give us a standalone story. There was other things happening in the Empire than Luke and Leia, you know. This was it started off good, and then they started bringing in all these people from Star Wars. That's not what we wanted. That's not why it hit number one. And you know, it was different. It was exciting. It wasn't the same thing you keep chewing up and spitting out at us. But no, let's tie it back to this. You know, well, and it will see what Filoni can get away with, and what the corporate overlords will force him to do, and it'll it'll be fun to yeah. watch. And I, I feel like that's what happened, though, is the corporate got too involved in that. They saw the numbers and they're like, oh, you know. That's now, like, usually Star what happens, yeah. Chew this story up and spit it out at them and let them eat it, you know, which is what they've done with Mandalorian. They chewed up every single part of that and spun it off every way they can instead of giving us the story we want. So basically what they always do. Yeah. You know, they're falling right back into it. And now you and want them to stop to doing that. Them doing that, you know. And they didn't. <laughs> and I'm not saying the other stuff isn't good, but it's not what we want. <laughs> I guess I'm weird. If I had a company or a TV show and I saw that it was really making people happy, I'd stay with it. If that's what's making me money right now, 
I would give them that so much that they got so sick and tired of seeing the little green dude, you know? <laughs> you, you, you say that, but fans don't know what they want. Right, and that's a lot of the problem. Yeah. We, we got The Force Awakens, and what was the number one complaint? Oh, this is, this is a new hope regurgitated. It's the same thing over and over again. Well, that's what we, that's what y'all want. Okay. Well, let's do something different. We do Last Jedi. Totally different. Oh my God. It's so different. What the hell are they doing? It just, you can't, it's like you can't please anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not saying I like one over the other. They, they both have plus and minuses in, in my opinion. But it's just that's that's the thing that kind of gets my craw because it's you know you can't you can't please them. Yeah. You, you you try to do the same thing over and over again. It's like well it, it, it it's a it's the same thing. I mean, why why are we doing this? You make any kind of changes and oh my god what the fuck are y'all doing? This is not what I wanted. It's like okay maybe we shouldn't do anything at all. You know just keep. Tweaking little things in the original trilogy and, and re-releasing that every few years, like Lucas was doing at the end there. People seem to eat that up. Yeah. They whined about it, but they ate it up. Yeah. I think they did pretty good at doing something different with The Mandalorian. I used to, that's, that, that's what made it so appealing after everything else that's been... and. I mean, it, it's their own fault that they've made the Star Wars universe so appealing and interesting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to just hear about one family lineage. We want to. There's a lot of neat things that there's, make up that. There's got to be more, you know? right? Yeah. There's got to be more. There's got to be something interesting else out there. Yeah. Who were they saving the universe for? I want to know about them people. Aren't Those Jar Jar are boring, <laughs> right? That's the deal. They're favoring it for average people, and average people are boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they kind of showed with you know, with uh, I forget his name now, Din Djarin. They kind of showed us that even ordinary people were kind of interesting, you know. People. people mm. <laughs> Yes. You don't want to go there. I don't. I'm not exactly sure how to go there. <laughs> oh, okay. And I, I don't know. I I say I want more, but I'm kind of scared with what they're going to do next because because they've burned you so many times. Well, that and kind of like The Walking Dead when they took their two main characters out. I'm afraid they're about to do the same thing over here. You know, instead of giving us what you want, you're going to force us to watch this other stuff we already told you we didn't want by removing the two we do want to see. Well, you said you wanted something different. Uh huh. Which was what Din and Grogu were. Right, but, but now, now you want more of that, which is not the same as what you wanted before. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, you know... In Jajaran and Grogu, they were two different, you know, they had nothing to do with the Star Wars movies. They, mm -hmm. you know, he happened to be a Mandalorian, but have we really gotten too much into them in the movies? But no, but wait, they're about to make a movie and they'll make you be into it. <laughs> and they'll show you how they connect it. So yeah, I just, I wish they would have kept it separate. Stay away from this mess you've made over here. Right. And honestly, we're picking <laughs> on you a little bit. Over here. <laughs> we're picking on you a little bit about this. But yeah, we've 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 all complained about how they turned they so they had one significant hit and then all of a sudden it became a vehicle for other stuff. Yeah. And they did that too quickly. I think we kind of all agreed on that back yeah. when we talked about it, is that they, they did that too fast. Instead yeah. of instead of riding the success of the show that was a success, they decided to try to hitch everything onto it all at once in like season three, which was but presumptuous of them, really. That 
Or... Well, but that's that's that, but that's that's the way TV has always worked. I mean, God, look at All in Family. Look what all of that came from. What came from that? Now, granted, it took time. Right. They didn't do but it in season two. They did. They they didn't. They yeah. didn't do it in like a year's time. I I get. I I, I give I give you that. But, but that you know, it's it's something similar, just in a right. shorter time frame. It, right. And well, it is, but it also smacks of desperation when you do it that fast. Which is definitely well, it's not really that different, but but it has its it has its own emotional baggage. We'll put it that way, and it's too much too soon. I I don't disagree. People like change, but they like it in very very small increments. Yeah, because if you change too much at once, then it's something it, different, it, and it sucks. It is. <laughs> it's not change anymore. It's something totally different. Yeah, you, you've you've changed it, so I'm not happy with it. Right. Yeah. So, and and we'll you're see. also right, Tom, in that people don't know what they want. They don't. So. But they know what they don't want when they see it. Right after somebody <laughs> sunk forty million dollars into it, they now know yep. that they don't want that. Yeah. Yep. Well, wasn't there also another standalone Star Wars movie, or was it? Was it a movie? Maybe it was a series that they did that did really well too. Well, Ro- well, there was Rogue One, but that le- <laughs> the, you know there was the joke that they were going to do a sequel of Rogue One and we're going to call it A New Hope. Yeah, because that's what it was. Yeah, it was the prequel it, to. It was it, it was literally leading up to A New Hope. Yeah. So. Well, and then there was also the solo. Solo, which was yeah. not a success. Which was not a success, but yeah, I still I, I've only said bits and pieces of it, so I can't say anything one way or the other. I haven't actually sat down and watched it. I my my problem my problem with that was it's it is from what I had heard, it sounds like they took everything that was mentioned in the original trilogy. And let's put it in one film. I'm like, okay, he, you know, he went, he he wins the Falcon. Right. He does the Kessel backstory. Run. His entire backstory is is literally in this two hour film. And I'm like, that no, you know, he meets Chewie. He wins the Falcon. He does the the Kessel Run. All all that in two hours. I'm like, that's right. The Reader's Digest condensed version of the Han Solo story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. That's, you could stretch no. that into five movies. Yeah, it's at least two or three, you know. But yeah, it, 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 that's that's my major complaint about that. But you know, as I, but whether it's a good movie or not, I I I can't say. I have not seen. So. Yep, me either. I think they've created a good universe. Now they need to learn how to play in it. That's the trick. Well, and that's... If Floney can do it. If you've Thank seen you Rebel... It, <laughs> if you've seen Rebels, then you know. Because, I mean, that is not a Luke Skywalker story. It is a totally new cast of characters... And yes, they're dealing with the empire. It's it's the it's the, the days where it's leading up to a new hope. But as a new cast, and they're doing their own thing and and all that. It just I enjoyed the heck out of that show. Yeah. No, that was the animated one you were telling me about. Yeah, that mm-hmm. I started right. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that one too. I had to think for a minute. <laughs> there's, there's a, been lot, a of, lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff to remember, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you definitely, you definitely need to watch Rebels if the for some of the stuff that's in these shows that get mentioned and explained and all that. So, especially Ahsoka. Yeah, because that's that's yeah. Liter- that, is, that is literally Rebels season five or six. I don't remember what it is now. And they had one guy, and I think it was it the Mandalorian or Boba Fett. He was like a robot cowboy. I forget what his name was now. But it was kind of interesting seeing him over in the TV show 
because we saw like a totally different side of him in Rebels. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of neat to see a follow up kind of on him. So some of it's not bad, but like I said, when they try to tie it back to the what I call the OG trilogy, you know, it just don't do it. <laughs> well, you don't have I mean, to. I, is the deal. I, I, yeah, I mean, I well, and and supposedly the whole the whole thing was that the the, the movies and the shows were supposed to do stuff. Not tied to Skywalker. Yeah. But, 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 uh, you in know. In that same realm. Yeah. But in some cases, it's kind of hard to avoid that. Like, it, you talk about Groku, but he's, he's a force sensitive. So, yeah. I mean, you, does Luke have to be necessarily involved? Well, you, yes or no. It depends on how you feel about it. But, you know. That's the it, that's that part of that story's done. Yeah. You know, he's made his decision, and he's not gonna he's not gonna become a Jedi. He's staying with with uh, Din Djarin yeah. and, and become a Mandalorian. When they did tie that back to Luke, I didn't see that as offensive as some of the other things they've done, though, because although it was a big moment, it wasn't a big part of the show. If that makes sense. You know, of course, nostalgia, yes, but it wasn't, you know, it didn't take a lot of time for him to be a part of that story. Right, because he didn't come in and take over the story. Right. It was still Grogu's story. Yep. And I, I think there was only maybe one and a half episodes with him actually shown a lot in a, but it never centered on him or what he was doing there. It was like you said, it was all Grogu's story. Right. Had to explain how he, <laughs> which was nice. They missed that step in the last movie. <laughs> Yeah, fingers crossed. Good luck. I I wish the best for him. Yep. He's got a big play. All right. Any special shout-outs or mentions this week? Not me. Nothing here. Okay, we'll move on to our regular shout-outs. I want to thank Pop Goes to Culture Podcast Network for allowing us to be part of a great group of uh, fellow podcasts. We recommend that you check them out. Uh, there will be a link in our show notes. We also want you to check out the fine men and women who have been co- so kind enough to spread the word of the fellowship by retweeting our links. Uh, that is Potter and Family. The best way to check them out is to go to Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it and do a search, hashtag Potter and Family, all one word. Scroll through whatever catches your eye. Uh, click on that link and download that episode, and we hope you have a great time listening to them. I want to thank Manny the Martyr for supplying the music to the podcast. In our show notes, you can be able to check out some of their other music. And finally, you, dear listener, thank you for downloading and listening to today's episode. We value your feedback. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any comments, suggestions, uh, observations, complaints, what have you, please send them our way. Email address is email at the fellowship of the geeks.net. Or you can go to the website, go to the About Us page. There's a contact form you can fill out there. Did not mention this earlier, but we do have a Discord that you can join. We have we post a lot of news items, stuff for discussions, all types of fun stuff. We do have a section where you can post your thoughts there regarding the show. Um, social media on Facebook, we are the Fellowship of the Geeks. On Twitter, Instagram, and Hive Social, we are at Fellowship Geeks. If you want to follow our personal Twitter accounts, Mike can be found at Mikey Geek. Liz can be found at LN underscore Geek. 
Les may or may not be found at Fake Les Webster, and I can be found at Tom TC Geek. And from wherever you download our episodes, if you'd be so kind as to rate and review the show, it would be greatly appreciated. Anything else before we say goodbye? Just thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you listening. Thanks for listening, everybody. We do appreciate support, support as always. Until next time, geek on, my friends. We thank you for listening to the show. Comments, suggestions, and questions can be sent to email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. You can follow us on Facebook at The Fellowship of the Geeks and on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Until next time...